Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. Do you find your skies lack drama? Fail to use a graduated filter in your shots? Fear not, because you can still improve your sky by mimicking a graduated filter. And that's what we're going to do in today's video. In case you're a beginner and don't know what a graduated filter is, let's give a short overview. A graduated filter is a square or circular filter made of glass or optical resin with a tonal gradation. It runs from an area of darker to lighter tones or darker to clear tones. It is used to prevent overexposure and used to add color typically to a bland sky, which cannot always be fixed in post-processing. Finally, a graduated filter can be mimicked in editing software but it will not be better than using an actual graduated filter. So that's what we're going to be doing. We will be mimicking a graduated filter in software with Affinity Photo. So we're going to be working with this raw image, which while good, could use a more dynamic looking sky. So the first thing to do when dealing with raw images is to start processing them with the developed persona. That's the best place to recover details from the sky. Why not photo persona? Let's demonstrate the limitations. Here is a highlight adjustment in photo persona. And here is an exposure adjustment. Not a very pleasing looking result. And that's because layers in the photo persona do not treat images as raw, as we've highlighted in other videos. So here we are in the developed persona. As you can see, the adjustments look much better. However, since they are global adjustments, they are affecting the entire image, both the sky and the foreground. And that's not what we want. To limit the adjustment, we need to use an overlay. In particular, the overlay gradient tool. So what is the overlay gradient tool? The overlay gradient tool allows you to apply a linear, elliptical, or radial graduated opacity to the selected overlay adjustment. It is exclusive to the developed persona. A similar tool does not exist in the photo persona. Finally, it is used for targeted or local adjustments. First, let's access the overlay tool by clicking on the overlays tab and clicking the gradient tool. With the gradient tool click, drag from the top of the image to a little past the horizon. It doesn't have to be perfect as you can adjust the tool later. As you can see, the overlay has maximum strength at the top and gradually dissipates, becoming transparent at the bottom. You can adjust the length of the transition by lengthening the distance between the top handle and the bottom handle. You can rotate the tool Useful if the sky is at an angle. Next, let's perform an exposure, brightness, and contrast adjustment. Notice now, with the overlay tool, the effect is localized to the sky. And because the transition is gradual, we don't get ugly halos as we would if we used an overlay brush. So here is the before and the after. A big improvement makes the image much more dramatic. Don't you agree? Let's move on to our second image. Once again, let's use the overlay gradient tool as in the previous image. As the sky is a bit more overexposed, it brings to the fore one of the key disadvantages of the overlay gradient tool, and that is its lack of dynamic range. As you can see, even at maximum settings, it is not enough to bring down the brightness of the sky adequately. What to do? To overcome this, what we need to do is to add our graduated filter in the developer persona. But before I do that, I'll bring back a little bit more detail in the sky using the highlight slider as photo persona does not do that properly. Once done, I'll click develop. Now I'm in the photo persona. I'll enhance the sky by using a brightness contrast adjustment. 
As you can see, the sky is looking better, but the adjustment is affecting the foreground as well. Let's fix that by adding a graduated filter. Right click on mask layer and choose empty mask. Now, let's learn about our second tool, which is the Gradient Fill tool. The Gradient Fill tool allows you to apply and adjust gradient colors on all layers, including pixel layers, fill layers, adjustment layers, live filter layers, layer masks, as well as vector and text content. It has a few key settings. The first is Type, which converts the gradient's color type. For example, from linear to radial. You can select, pick, and modify the layer solid or gradient color. Click the color swatch to display a pop-up panel. You can rotate gradient, which rotates the applied gradient by 90 degrees, and you can reverse gradient. Doing so will swap the end stops. All right, so now let's click on the gradient fill tool. Next, let's change the type to linear. Next, let's click on the color swatch tool. Click on the left stop and select a white color. Click on the right stop. This time, select a black color. Now let's apply the gradient. To see the gradient clearer, I'll show the mask layer by alt-clicking it. With the mask layer selected, drag from the top of the image to around the horizon. Next, let's click on the Brightness Contrast Adjustment. Let's lower the brightness and increase the contrast. That's a good result. But notice, as the row of buildings are at an angle, the gradient has made the top of the buildings a little bit too dark. Let's fix that by painting white on the mask. I'll use a large but soft brush for the most natural effect. Next, I'll go back to Develop Persona and increase the sharpness and perform a few other minor adjustments. So here is the before and the after. So I hope you found this video helpful. That's how you simulate a graduated filter with Affinity Photo. And as you can see, it's great for enhancing skies easily and naturally. Do let me know if you shoot with a real graduated filter yourself or what other techniques you use to create nice looking skies. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.